you can you can ask me any question you like. Combination of embryology, what the Quran has mentioned, um, and follow that. Have you become Muslim or have you accepted Islam? Why and why not? Thank you. That's the question I've been asked, of course, <laughs> hundreds of times, and I, it's a very logical question. And I'll give you the same answer that I gave in Saudi Arabia, that I gave in Toronto, that I gave in Sudbury a couple of weeks ago, and that I give anywhere I go. And that is that I was raised in a Christian family. My father was a was a Presbyterian minister, uh, and uh, he uh, taught me to respect all religions, and uh, he. Uh, said that all those who believe and worship God uh, just have a different way of doing it. So I have no difficulty uh, in uh, understanding that we, we all worship the same God. Now it would be different if I didn't have a strong faith of my own. In other words, if I had uh, been a, a, an agnostic and didn't believe strongly in God, that obviously I would have ex probably accepted your religion. But as I was raised and uh, as a, a Christian and, and, and believe as you do that uh, uh, Muhammad was a, was a messenger of God just as Jesus was a messenger uh, each bringing messages from God so I didn't find it difficult when I was told about the Quran and that these were revelations from my God uh, from God it didn't uh, it wasn't difficult for me because my own father made it very clear to me that he was uh, called by God to be uh, uh, a minister to go and, and, and talk about God uh, to the, the people. So uh, in an indirect way, maybe God is telling me that this is the right thing for me to do to uh, help uh, explain your holy book uh, to you. Now, uh, your scientific colleagues can do this just as well as I can if they have an understanding of embryology. But I've always said that it's uh, probably mean more uh, as a non-Muslim for me to tell people around the world that I believe that what is recorded in the Quran is accurate according to our present knowledge. And uh, as I say, I'm sincere in what I say is that we just didn't have this knowledge and some of this knowledge about the genes and the chromosomes has only come to us in the last uh, 10 and 15 years. When I was a student uh, 25 or 30 years ago, we didn't have a lot of the knowledge we have now. And there are a lot of things in the Quran that were, uh, I was asked questions about and I said, I don't understand it. And I think that maybe in another hundred years, and I won't be here, but some of those verses, if you ask them to the embryologists of that day, they will say, sure, that is what this means. So that to answer your question very simply, I don't feel it's necessary for me to become a Muslim to uh, worship God. I've done that for all of my 60 years. And uh, if anything, though, uh, understanding this just uh, shows me that uh, God uh, has a, a great influence in this, uh, in, in this uh, world. That, that, that's the best that I can answer that for you. Uh, and uh, I have seen some of my colleagues who've been so impressed by what they have uh, read in the Quran and so on that they have certainly, uh, there have been a few cases where they have converted, and that's fine. And uh, if I'm ever so motivated, I would do the same. But I've been I have a strong uh, belief. Uh, it just happens to be a, a little different way of worshiping God than yours. But uh, we're all worshiping the same God. I like to think, and that if we can work together, we'll have a much happier world. Thank you. based on scientific knowledge in the seventh century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God, from God. Muhammad could not have known these facts about human development in the seventh century because most of them were not discovered until the twentieth century. This is a leech and this is the human embryo but twenty-three days. I think you have to agree that the similarity between these uh, structures is amazing. Little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran 
cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th seventh century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolutely no scientific training. It is not surprising then that we relook to, uh, to our holy scriptures for help and enlightenment. From what stuff has he created him? From a sperm drop, he hath created him and then moldeth him in due proportions. Surah 80, Ayah 18 and 19. Thank you very much. In the field of embryology, the Quran describes the various embryological stages of the human development in great detail in Surah, Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14. It says that the human we were nutfa, then we made it into an alaka, a mudga, a zaman, that human being is created from a minute quantity of fluid. Then it made it into alaka, that is a leech-like substance, then made it into a chewed-like lump, then made it into bones, then clothed the bones with flesh. When this verse was showed in the early part of the 1980s to Dr. Keith Moore, who at that time happened to be the highest authority in the field of anatomy and embryology, he was the head of the department of Toronto in the University of Toronto. He said that the description of the Quran is far superior to what modern embryology describes today instead of stage one, two, three. And he said, that it's not possible that any human being can mention these things in the Quran. This Quran has to be the word from Almighty God and he has no objection in accepting Prophet Muhammad as the messenger of Almighty God. In the 23rd chapter titled The Believers from the 12th to the 14th verses, God is said to give a detailed description of how the human being is formed. It begins by saying, We then placed him as a sperm drop in a place of settlement, firmly fixed. Then we made the drop into a alaqa. We will translate this word very soon. And then we changed the alaqa into a lump. Then we made out of that lump into bones. And then we clothed the bones with flesh. Then we caused him to grow and come into being and attain the definitive human form. In the 21st century, we can now safely say that this verse is clearly describing the process of human development in correct chronological order. However, what we should be paying attention to in particular is the second stage, referring to the development of the embryo. The specific word used to describe the embryo in this verse is the word alaqa. The word alaqa, when translated into English, can mean three separate things. Firstly, a blood clot or to be suspended, that is to be hanging or clinging to something, or thirdly and finally, a leech. Now all three definitions don't come anywhere near what we perceive to be the human embryo. So why are these words used and what significance do they share with the human embryo? Can the embryo be described as a blood clot? Well, what do you think? In the third week of embryonic development, a tubular heart joins with the blood vessels to form a primordial cardiovascular system and by the end of the third week the blood is circulating and the heart begins to beat on day 21. The first thing that comes to mind in regards to being suspended or hanging is the umbilical cord. But we can't use that example because we are simply referring to step 2 before the baby has even formed. But we now know today that the umbilical cord is formed from the connecting stalk and the connecting stalk is formed as soon as the embryo is formed. The embryo's connecting stalk has even been described by John Allen and Beverly Kramer as an object to suspend the developing embryo in the extra embryonic column. So an embryo is suspended and does have a strong resemblance with the blood clot. What on earth would an embryo have to do with a leech? Figure A shows the structure of an embryo at 25 days. Figure B shows a leech. Now please note once again that the embryo in this stage is no greater than the size of a kernel of wheat. This is an x-ray of the embryo at 22 days. 
This is the internal structure of a leech. It's mind-blowing stuff, but you still haven't seen anything yet. This is the head of the embryo at 22 days. The detail you are seeing right now is absolutely impossible to be seen with the human eye and can only be seen with a microscope. This is the back end of a leech. There's no other words used to describe this other than mind-blowing. The pictures we have shown you are impossible to be seen with the human eye or even to be predicted by the human mind. Once again, the verses we have shown you were revealed over 1400 years ago to a man who couldn't read nor write. Are these the words of God? Descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God, from God, from God. Shaheen, Shaheen.